Hello everyone and welcome to this video about the through hole braids clone. This will be a kind of different build video of the braids. The module itself is very easy to put together so it's more a discussion about the module and how and why I decided to build one. It also covers some findings that I made during the build and how I tackled a couple of issues I run into. Finally I will make a demo of a couple of sounds to show it in action. Alright, I kind of had this module in the back of my head for a while, since a lot of DIYers have built one already. But trying to source all the different components ended up in a situation where I had to pay more for shipping than for the actual components themselves. If they were even possible to find in stock. So that kind of put me off a bit. But recently Christian Blåsol made a video about the through hole braids, which is a slightly reworked design using only through hole components. It uses the blue pill module instead of the surface mounted STM32 microcontroller. So I bought the PCB kit from Christian's shop on Tindy and started to source the components. In some cases I wasn't able to find the exact parts but I got told of good uh, substitutes. The part that actually caused most headache was a simple thing as the LM4040 voltage references. But more about that later in the video. But on with the build. One of the first obstacles that I ran into was a couple of tall caps that was a little bit too high to fit between the main board and the control board. So I had to put them on the other side of the PCB. And uh, as you can see, I'm not a very experienced through hole DIYer. I should have started with the sockets for the ICs before I added the resistors, since most of them have been mounted in a 45 degree angle. But uh, all of the passive components are in place. And next up we have to put in the discrete semiconductors. Here you can see the sockets and the blue pill in place. The software requires the CBT6 version with 128 kilobyte of flash. But I use the C8T6 version which only have 64 kilobyte of flash on board. But it turns out that many C8T6 boards work because I actually have 128 kilobyte flash. Christian have a good video about that and he also go through the details how to program the microcontroller. So I won't repeat that. Okay, so with the display and all the ICs in place, the only parts that were missing were the 2.5 volt and 10 volt references. But uh, a small obstacle like that won't stop me from smoke testing the module. Okay, great success so far. The software, encoder and display seems to be working. While I was waiting for the final components to arrive, I started to think about adding a lens to the front panel. I have a MSLA 3D printer that uses UV light to cure resin and for this project I'm using transparent resin dyed with orange ink because the displays that I'm using are sort of red amber in color. Okay, so this is what the lens looks like after washing and final curing. The surfaces are a bit rough, but that is something that I will fix. First of all I need to unify and flatten the surface with a wet 1000 grit sanding paper. And after cleaning up the mess, the next step is to coat the surfaces with a clear coat. Since my second hobby is scale modeling and I have lots of stuff for doing things like that. I'm using a transparent glossy varnish that is thinned with lacquer thinner. I used an airbrush to apply the clear coat in a thin layer. This clear coat is quite smelly so I have a spray booth with a forced ventilation to ex extract the fumes. After curing for 24 hours the lens looks quite good. But we can improve the sheen a little bit by using a polishing compound. This is the stuff that scale modelers are, that are building cars and motorcycles use to get a nice glossy surface on their paint job. And after rinsing warm water, it's time to glue the lens in place. I use white wood glue for this. Never use super glue, since it will evaporate gases that will haze the lens. Trust me, I've done it many times and it always ends in grief. So, here we have the finished product. I got the wrong voltage references from a supplier, uh, so I have to order it from a different place. But uh, it showed up a couple of days later so everything is good. Something that is worth mentioning is that I ran into a weird issue with the SPI bus that is used by the digital to analog converter for the audio out. 
At first I didn't mount the 47 ohm serial termination resistors. The audio was very distorted and uh, had a lot of noise in it. But then I added those and it got better. But I had to add two 47 picofarad capacitors on the serial clock and data lines to get rid of the problem completely. But now the module is finished, so let's hear what it sounds like. First we have a sawtooth with a sub oscillator. Next we have the super saw that is modulated by a slow LFO. Finally we have the epic pluck sound. Here I'm using a bit of programming of the bass body to get legato and picking style sounds, almost like you would on a guitar. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to check the description. All the relevant links are there if you plan to build one of these. Thank you for watching, and I see you soon again.